Hello, guys. Welcome to another episode of Denying Conspiracies. Today's topic is a shocking and disturbing one. The conspiracy theory that PepsiCo and Cinemix are using human fetuses as an ingredient in their food products. Disgusting, right? This claim has caused extensive concern and outrage among the public. In this episode, we will investigate the validity of these allegations and explore the facts behind this controversial topic. We are going to provide an informed perspective on the matter, as always through some research and analysis of credible sources. Let's start by examining Daniel Pipe's analysis of the conspiracy theory, shall we? Pipes has highlighted the inconsistencies and lack of credible evidence in this theory, based on PepsiCo and Cinemix commingles facts and speculations without distinguishing between the two and without assigning degrees of probability or of factuality to the components of its claim. Also, another point that disproves this conspiracy theory according to Pipes' analytical tools, it's the dismissing of contradictory evidence which we are witnessing here. Additionally, both PepsiCo and Cinemix have denied these allegations and provided evidence to support their claims. The fact that they use fetal cells or tissues in their product is not supported by any credible scientific or factual evidence. They have also pointed out that the ingredient in question, which is called 293 Swedish kroner, is a commonly used cell line that has been extensively studied and is not derived from fetal tissue, but cultured cell lines since 1970. Cenomix states that their research uses a variety of cell lines, including 293 Swedish kroner, which is derived from human embryonic kidney cells but again, is not fetal tissue. Cinemix has also provided documentation from independent third-party auditors that confirm their compliance with ethical and legal standards, as this company works with other big brand commercial companies like Nestle and Crafts. So not, we are not consuming fetuses' cells every time that we drink a Diet Pepsi or chewing Tridents. As Pipes said, whoever gains from an event must have caused it. If you know who gained, you know who conspires. But who is the one who benefits from creating this theory? Is it personal reasons? Is it political reasons? This conspiracy is not a coincidence. Due to it was started by an anti-abortion group called Children of God for Life who were complaining not only about the use of fetus cells in food products, but about the use of mifepristone, commonly known as the abortion pill by Cenomix's scientists to make the HEK cells. Is this benefiting anyone? Does this anti-abortion group want to influence someone? It's important to note that psychological and political science tools can help us understand the emotional appeal and social influence of this conspiracy theory. The use of fetus cells in food products can be analyzed as an archetype where anti-abortion supporters are the heroes against a big establishment like PepsiCo. Also, the support received from the Republican Senator Ralph Shorty against abortion highlights the political influence this theory had. This conspiracy theory has raised concerns about the use of fetal tissue in food products, which may have affected consumer perceptions of PepsiCo's products. However, it's important to note that these allegations have been discredited by experts in the field, and both companies have provided evidence to support their claims. So, we can say that this conspiracy theory has been denied, because there is no credible evidence to support that PepsiCo and Cenomix use human fetuses as an ingredient in their food products. This claim is likely to be false, and both companies have denied the allegations and provided evidence to support their claims. However, this conspiracy theory has raised concerns about the use of fetal tissue in food products, which may have affected consumer perceptions of PepsiCo's products. So now you know. Don't believe everything you hear before questioning first.